David Lanham. <laughs> I'm David Lanham and this is the X5 <laughs> Jack X Polar Plunge uh, Challenge. podcast we are back for another episode here what's with, up i'm here with the ceo of x5 right here, charlie reese <laughs> matt cowan over here uh our audio engineer bert still working out what he, what his job is we got special <laughs> guest cobra mike here today that's right. you would think that's on? that's the biggest guest we got because it looks like a banger right but we also have trey lewis and terry adams here with us what's up guys welcome what's guys what's up, guys good to see y'all their tour bus broke down on the way to birmingham <laughs> Damn right. right here in cleveland alabama we got lucky as hell we just brought them in so <laughs> we'll give you a ride if you no i'll tell you the truth man we get like every time we do a show in birmingham we get like a lot of like I get a lot of DMs. They're like, "Hey man, I got this podcast." Like, oh, <laughs> we're just another one. Would you, no, would you come well, down and do it? And I'm just like, I don't even respond or anything. But David Lynham, te- you know, sent me a message on Facebook. I'm like, I'm there, dude. We, me and Terry, have, have uh, laughed at your antics and pretty much looked up to you over the years. We liked so your music too. Yeah, we're glad to be here, dude. <laughs> That's, man. Y'all you don't have much to, to look up to. Hey, listen, guys. Y'all I know y'all are on payroll, but y'all ain't got to go that hot on it, man. He's gonna pick up on it. <laughs> Fucking come straight in here lying and <laughs> no, no I'm, I'm for real man like i don't know we you know we did the cover band thing for years i mean six or seven years i mean i remember when we couldn't even get a gate tin roof you know mm-hmm. oh We'd yeah come down there on like tuesday nights and you'd be playing with like i don't know michael warren or somebody i'll play with know, anybody for a while on buddy. tuesday nights but we we would come down there and i don't know was, we just you know i, I just think you're I've always, you know, kind of looked up to you in a sense. So. Well, that makes. Yeah. I don't know how to take compliments. Bless <laughs> <laughs> well, his heart. Hey guys. I'm, okay. I'm He's sorry. not used to that on this podcast. <laughs> yeah, I really. Yeah, I feel like there's another foot about to drop at any, yeah. any minute. And, yeah. You know, when somebody in my band compliments me, it means, you know, something's going on. You're about something's to get fired. Down. Right. Well, he came here <laughs> and I hope we'd out piss David off, and he'd put a long rant on Facebook about it <laughs> for the next yeah. week. <laughs> Oh, Nicholas Sparks over there on Facebook or yeah. any social media. Dude, I, I, it used to be, it got to be a thing to where uh, uh, somebody would like, we'd get bad service in a place and yeah. they would tell the waitress, hey man, this guy over here dismantles people online, like on Facebook. <laughs> you better not, you better not give him <laughs> service because he'll rant about it and you'll be in big trouble. <laughs> <laughs> well, not that this is going to air before you guys play, obviously. Yeah. So, what uh? What brings you guys to what brings you guys to town? Iron City, Birmingham. Iron Atlanta. City, Birmingham. Yeah. Okay. God, who would have thought one day you'd be playing Iron City? Not know? me. <laughs> <laughs> That's I mean, like we did, like the you know the the radio shows there. Like we would get you know they'd throw us a bone and let yeah. us open for people. But I mean, well, we sucked back wow, then. I mean, we were yeah. terrible. The good thing um, is about when you suck, bad. you don't know how bad you suck. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, like, when I was a terrible drummer, and they, I, I guess I did know, they would bring in another drummer right in front of me in the studio to, <laughs> to record my tracks. Like, I would try for a couple of hours, and then Jason Elgin would be like, hey, man, just go up, grab something to eat, and uh, we'll go get somebody else up here, all right? I remember crying about that shit. You ever been not good enough to play in the studio, and they, like, come by, somebody uh, already, come cut oh, your shit behind you? I already knew I wasn't good enough to. I'm still I there. didn't. I thought I, I, I kind of did okay, because right. I was in that range where you don't know how bad you suck. Yeah, man. When they bring in somebody else to record your tracks, I literally <laughs> called my mom, going, I'm not "Good enough." And, and they're bringing in somebody else. I don't even know if they're gonna put my name. Like the 
the band was called Lynam, but I was like, <laughs> it's going to be called Lynam with a different drummer playing. And he's going to get all the credit. <laughs> I remember thinking how terrible it was. Well, I guess uh, so, like, when you come from the rock and roll world, you know, like, everybody plays on their own records. Oh, yeah. You know like, I mean? it matters. But, like, in country music, I mean, there's, you know, there's been studio musicians for years. You yeah. Know there's I mean? like so, five guys that play on everything yeah, up there, yeah, isn't there? Yeah. Well, there's probably more, a little more than that, but like I think there's like there's different levels. Like you got like Brent Mason and like you know the older yeah. like cats that have been doing it for you know thirty years plus. But then there's like this new wave of you know up and coming that are like mid that play on some stuff that's on the radio, and then there's like a class below them, you know. There's construction workers in Nashville that can just play yeah. circles around your ass, <laughs> yeah, you know? Exactly. <laughs> like everybody up there. Sometimes, are you plugged into that circuit up in Nashville? Or are you? Sometimes I go down to Broadway. Like uh, I've been seeing this chick that still plays on Broadway and stuff. And like so I'll go down there and I'll watch some of the bands. And I'm just like, damn, these bands are like really good. They could like probably smoke our ass oh, sometimes, yeah. you know? Thank God they don't know to leave Broadway, you know? No. Yeah. None of them do. They just stay on Broadway. Well, and, and a lot of the, you know, a lot of the players like – are just like hired guns with these, you know, touring artists, these, you know, that have like, yeah, they're just off the, work. Yeah. They, well, yeah. they have songs on the radio, but they're like, you know, whatever the artist they work for doesn't really take care of them. So they have to like go play yeah, on Broadway. Yeah. They'll, they'll go on tour all weekend, get back at, from yeah. but on the bus on Sunday, early morning, and have a yeah. Broadway gig that night, that Monday, that no Tuesday, shit. and then Some go back play on two the and three a day. That's crazy. I didn't know yeah, it went like I have that. A, our, uh, our music director in our band, like he, he's played for like, you name it. He's played for a lot of people. Shannon Doe, like he yeah. played for Riley Green for a little while. That's how I met him. Yeah, I opened for Riley Green at um, Iron City actually one time, and uh, I met him that night. And I just knew that if I ever got an opportunity to do something, that I was gonna like hire him. You know. Yeah. And uh, but he he's told us stories like he was out on tour with like wasn't playing for Carrie was Carrie Underwood, but he was playing for like another artist, and like they were on this grand tour they were on tour bus but he was getting paid like 150 bucks a night mm. Mm. nobody but would believe that shit. But playing it, what but sheds it made and him look cool you know what i yeah. mean and like you know he's able to get endorsements and things like that but he still wasn't you know yeah. there was a guy behind him that would have taken that gig if oh, he yeah. said no at 150 oh yeah, that's crazy 100 yeah, yep. percent for it's less like, it's like for damn less. you know you could go play in a and private wedding band and make way more money yeah. than that you know <laughs> i think the key to nashville is just carrying around uh on broadway is carrying around a tip bucket if you mm -hmm. don't do, oh I, you have to do that. you'll starve to death yeah. if you don't do that nashville. <laughs> yeah you gotta like, you gotta be able to work that thing. yeah dude you gotta have people there a lot of people do multiple singers or at least two a hot girl and, yeah i or, learned to work hire a hot chick. i learned to work yeah. the tip bucket at uh in uh tin roof no what was oh, that uh wow. Uh, uh, Pablo's. Pablo's Mexican. No, oh, oh, Terry, Terry will tell hey. you stories of the kind of shit I used to oh, say. Yeah. We would be playing and no one listened anyway. You know, we're You're playing. Right. I mean, you could be on stage like grabbing your nipples, yeah. you know. And, and Trey, they're not paying attention. Mid song, Trey would be like, I'd like to pay my fucking power bill this month, so could y'all at least give me something? <laughs> <laughs> Start yelling I at was jaded from day <laughs> one. You know? Uh, you know, I'm not going to be at Pablo's forever. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> That's I've always thought it would be hilarious to cut a live album and like a real live album, like a bar live yeah. album, like in between songs, they're like, order up for table three. And you're yeah. like, oh, yeah, by the way, whoever got the tacos, they're up here. And like the banter in between songs <laughs> the, about food orders. Singing happy birthday. Yeah, happy birthday. Oh, yeah singing having, to, <laughs> having to fucking cater to some fucking see you next Thursday's yeah. birthday. Yeah. Yeah. Requesting yeah. brown eyed girl 35 down? times. Yeah, yeah. Y'all are too damn <laughs> loud. The <laughs> We used to play at that place, uh, Rogue Tavern. Y'all remember that place? Oh, yeah. Second, Second Avenue. Avenue. Yeah. 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 I mean, you know, the second we would get in there, like, we'd get loaded in. I mean, this, and there would be like, we'd be like, man, this is going to be a good night. There's a oh, lot yeah. of people in here. Get the you first know? note. <laughs> the <laughs> first note, the first time the drummer so cracks the cymbals, I mean, everybody's just leaving, and then you're playing to like five people. Dude, you, know? you can oh, tell yeah. the, these, these guys that have played to nobody for years, when they get up on stage in front of a ton of people and they're just so comfortable <laughs> with it, like, you, you want to look at the crowd and go, you guys have no idea how you're many not gonna empty do. rooms yeah. I played. Like this is, and this you're not going to say or do anything to us that we haven't heard. Right? You, you suck, or you right. know, my cousin's better. Or can you play Free Bird? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I, I sometimes I like to show up to Broadway because I still have a lot of friends that play down there. John Stone, you know him? Uh, who? John Stone plays at Kid Rocks. I think I know John Stone. John's from. I'm uh, terrible with names. John's from here. He's another Bama boy. He's from Scottsdale. Yeah, but he's there area. three or four days a week. Okay. He kills yeah. it. Um, yeah. 
but anyways, I'll go down there and I'll get up and play with my friends. I'll play for like an hour because people know Dick down in Dallas, but like sometimes they still don't know who I am, and I'm right. I'm cool with that. Right, you know? right. That's I the perfect it. kind of fame you it. want. Right. Yeah. I was on, when I went on tour with Kid Rock this year. He told me one night we were I, I don't remember where we were maybe his house or something. He said, he said, you know, dude, I can't even go to a Dollar General or the gas station. Of he course said, not. He <laughs> said, enjoy that shit where you're at. You know, and I like took that to heart, but yeah. I'll go down to Broadway and I'll get up and I'll play for like an hour with like Paxton yeah. or somebody and I'll just play like when it rains. It Paxton pours. plays Broadway? Paxton P. Yeah. Yeah. I thought he lived in Starkville. He no, did. He, he moved. He moved. He moved. Oh, okay. He moved. Move. He lives there. But Damn, I, I know a lot of people in Nashville yeah. then. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to that big goofy. I'll, yeah. I'll get up and I'll play like, you know, just covers for like an hour and then I'll play Dick Down in Dallas and then I'll just leave the bar, you know? <laughs> That's the perfect kind like, of famous to be there. Yeah. Yeah. It's great on the road too. We'll play a show, like a big show, and then we'll go out to like the local bar and just ask the ba- the band. will be like, here, y'all play. You ever have somebody ask to take a picture with you and you take a picture with them? You're like, this <laughs> rarely happens in public. And then somebody else sees you take a picture with them yeah. and they're like, Hey, I don't know who you are, yeah. but could I take him? Like they just like I yeah. don't know who this guy is, but I don't want to miss out and like sure. say I didn't get a picture with the guy that you know was the drummer for Nickelback. If it was sincerely yeah. somebody I should have known, you know. Yeah. That's people do it. People come up to there like, "Hey, dig down in Dallas." I'm like, "Yeah, man." Yeah, yeah. that's all they got. Yeah, like, <laughs> you want to follow that up with something? Like, no. Like, yeah. like, yeah. like, we went to a Rangers game and that. they did that yeah. to him. He, this guy, one guy, was a group of friends and a bunch of girls. You know, and this guy was like, "That's the dick down in Dallas guy." And all of his friends were like, "No, it's not." So he took a picture with Trey, and then the rest of them were like, "That's not him." And Trey was like, "Fuck you, it is." Yeah, <laughs> I, uh, it was like the first or second uh, Kid Rock show that we did this year. Uh, we were at. St- I didn't know you play with Kid Rock. Yeah, I did six For months. months yeah. I did a six months tour with you. Them. Piece of shit. It was awesome. Dude. God, <laughs> mighty. That, that he is so much fun to watch. Like I'll never be driving down the road listening to Kid Rock in my car, but yeah. I'd pay a hundred dollars to go see his that live movie. show is unreal, unbelievable. Dude, you know dude. he's fifty one and he plays like, all the instruments. I like- did, <laughs> in, yeah. If I did like what he does on stage for like three minutes, I'd be have to like go out, uh, go throw up. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, he's, he's all crazy. over the place, like just jumping around. And he's yeah. a, he's like Screaming. he's a redneck like all of us. Yeah. And you think he's one of you? You're like, man, he's just like us. And then he gets on. Private, yeah. <laughs> flies yeah. off. Like, oh, he maybe he's not just like us. Yeah, every night he goes home. Every night, yeah, he flies. He flies in, gets off the plane, on stage, off stage, back in the car to the airport, and he's out. We played wow. with him at Rocklahoma, cool. and we saw him, his helicopter landing behind the stage. Dude, they started the intro <laughs> when he was like three miles out in the helicopter. You could see it coming in, and it's a timed intro. Like they fuck that up. He comes out on stage too late, and he drops down behind the stage. And runs out of the helicopter and does the show. And I'm telling you, while the band's still playing, he throws his wireless mic to the stage manager and he's on that helicopter and back out before the band quits playing the last song. It's crazy. And that then he gets, crazy. then wow. he flies right back to wherever, either yeah, Nashville he lives in or Nashville now. the White House he has. Yeah, Did you get it. invited to that? Yeah, I got to go mm-hmm. up there on 4th of July. God, I hate, <laughs> awesome. I hate this son of a bitch. Even more, how awesome is that house? Dude, it's cool. It's badass. Uh, his yeah, um, elevator right when you walk his in. His day to day manager, uh, Corey Gearman, like gave me uh, like the f- full tour. It's badass. No shit. Lineham's coming it's, out with a country did, album next did, year. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he did whatever it takes. Somebody else played special drums. with that Tucker Carlson guy, and they like give a tour of it in in there. They're like, sh- and they're on his trailer, like on his, the trailer, and he's like shooting machine guns with Tucker Carlson. <laughs> I mean, you got to kid rock it up when you're kid rock. Yeah. You know? That's yeah. the most kid rock shit you can yeah. do. <laughs> like the only thing he did to promote that tour was like did the Tucker Carlson special. That's it. And every show was sold out. Wow. Yeah. Like oversold, it was insane. See, John Stone that I told you about played he that cruise he used to do all the time. Yeah, he played on that cruise every year, and he's friends with him. And he has a festival out on his farm up in Ashland City, and he had my new band Get Sideways play there. And it's nothing but Kid Rock people that that, <laughs> yeah. that go on that cruise. And I'm talking like kind of disturbing, like uh, overalls, airbrushed with Kid Rock all oh, over. Dude. A lot every, of that walking around. Every show is just like fake titties and glitter. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> like that sounds fun. Hey, they can't stay but at man, that house. Like, he's, yeah. a, he's a good dude. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. A lot of those dudes that play down at like Kid Rocks are like people that he like met yeah. like that were like in opening bands that open for him. They're like, who's that? And he's like, if you move to Nashville, I'll give you a gig. And like, you know what I mean? 
like my song like he just heard that song he's like i want that on my tour it didn't come from like my agent or like you know my manager or like yeah. anything like that that was just like an organic thing and that's to, there's not a lot of artists out there that do that kind of thing you know tell me how that song came about so <laughs> so was that i'm the, sure you talked about it at nausea but we haven't yeah. heard it so that's cool really. i'll just tell you all the story i go on like autopilot you can, yeah, <laughs> you, 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 just you can pull it up here the, on the head yeah, you give us the cliff notes so all right, how'd so, that come about um when i was 29 i went through a divorce and i was like and i'm just gonna move to nashville see what happens you right know? i told terry and matt you know and i was like i moved to town and then you know i'm still we're playing it like what's that place in florida that we used to play at flounders flounders we were going oh, right shit. on the beach yeah, yeah. That's that's we're doing like that there. i'm still going home every weekend playing covers but i wanted to l learn how to write songs better so yeah i'm moving up. i'm just like meeting people and whatever um but we were in right before i moved we were playing at sky bar in the front room and uh, uh <laughs> i was at you know you know how like once you play covers man you gotta like find a way to like make it interesting i was singing big green tractor and i was saying take you for a ride on my big tally whacker yeah yeah i used to hear spencer from reckless sing <laughs> yeah, that thing yeah, yeah that's great yeah. <laughs> so just to see if people were listening yeah. like drink in my hand say dick we, in my hand we do that you know? every Ooh. night dude yeah. yeah so um I get done playing like not like we were going on a break or whatever, and this big tall guy walks. I'm like taller than me, six eight. Walks up to me. He's like, "Dude, that was hilarious." I'm Matt McKinney. Nice to meet you. And then I didn't think anything of it. It was like the first week I'd moved to Nashville. I was at this thing called Revival. It's like a, a singer songwriter mm -hmm. room. And uh, here comes that tall son <clears throat> bitch that I met in Auburn walking up to me. He said, "Dude, I met you down in Auburn, Sky Bar. You were singing, you know, take you for a ride on a big tally whacker." We shook hands and then like we just instantly started hanging out like we were like yeah. playing madden and shit at the house all the time he lived right oh, down the cool. street <laughs> and then so like we just kind of like he's like one of the matt mckinney's like one of these guys that like he brings all different kind of walks of life together you know like yeah. somebody you wouldn't normally hang out with but he's like friends with them so like you hang out with them you know yeah and then the world shut down 2020 was supposed to be like my best year like as far as like the cover shows went we were, for all of us of yeah we, we were supposed to make like really good on the yeah. privates we had like a bunch of weddings and stuff lined up and anytime <laughs> i could do like weddings or anything like that i could make enough money to support my songwriting habits that's, you that's, know? yeah for sure and uh but uh basically what happened was is i started to hang out with all these people that i was writing with and like really become good friends with them you know and like we were hanging out at each other's houses because we couldn't go anywhere there was nothing open and um i uh my buddy matt sh shows me this song dick town in dallas he all he has is like a verse and a chorus oh he he kind of he came wrote up. it yeah he wrote it with uh two other guys brent gafford and true trust claire and but it wasn't done and i was like that's pretty funny you know didn't think anything of it <laughs> and then I have a roommate. His name's Mitch Wallace. He owns his own company now. He does, like, social media, and uh, he's really good at it. Um, but one day we went to, like, Chili's, you know, like, restaurants started opening up again, but it was, like, you had to sit, like, you know. Yeah, yeah. And we went to, like, Chili's, which is pretty gross food. But Right. I was about to say, I didn't realize you were going to come up here and flex like this. All <laughs> <Yeah>. this. <laughs> two, two, two for one. But, actually, uh, actually, real quick, yeah. uh, let me give a shout-out to our sponsor, Chili's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh so we're driving back from chili's back to the house right and it's me mckinney and mitch and Shit. mitch got, we were listening to the work tape like they had finished the song and uh and mitch was like dude if this song was out i would spend 99 cents on this like i would buy this <laughs> song you know nobody really buys music anymore right. unless you got like dedicated fans you know um and you couldn't make a clean version of this with the radio like <laughs> no, there was no I mean, shot there was of no, that there was no thought of, of like, that yeah that, you know like <laughs> that you know if you're gonna say in a song don't just say it you're right know? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um but anyways i was like well fuck it, man i've been putting out music since 2013 nobody ever gave a shit like except for like my mom and like maybe some people that i went to high school with or <laughs> right like, some people i got sober with like and i'll do it you know yeah and uh and then so it became like i went home and learned it. it became like this bonfire thing you know like hanging out at friend's house and then my tour manager that's here matt burrell yeah he wasn't my tour manager back then he has a podcast called in the round podcast and and he also does like a round in nashville he said dude i want you to come uh play my round <laughs> and throw a bucket of ice on everybody yeah. with song. <laughs> yeah he's like i want you to come play my round i want you to play your music but then i want you to play a bonus song and i want you to play dick down in dallas so i go to this round and i sit down and i start you know i play my songs whatever and then i start playing dick down in dallas and 
you know, it's just all our friends in the bar, our little community of songwriters in Nashville, yeah. and everybody in the bar is just dick down, dick down in Dallas. <laughs> and Nikki T, the guy that does uh, Raised Rowdy, which is like a platform for like, you know, music, country music in Nashville, and uh, he takes a video of it mm-hmm. and puts it on Facebook. And so, like, I don't know, back then, like a video with like 50,000 views was a lot of views, you know? Yeah. Especially. And then from there, uh, Trey Bonner, he does my, like, he keeps up with all my content, like archives it. he's been doing it since like I opened for Riley Green in 2018. Like, so That's he's, great. he's been on the team, you know, like Terry. Back when you ain't shit, yeah, he was Terry's, there, you know? Terry's been with me for 10 years. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Um, but, um, so he he got it put on Caller Daddy's Facebook group, and then from there Matt McKinney got it put on Old Row, mm-hmm. a bar stool. Mm-hmm. So like I'm yeah I'm like sitting there like I'm I was dating this girl at the time, deciding like how I was gonna record this thing. Am I gonna go like more like Corey Smith acoustic, you know like the popo, or like I'm gonna go all yeah. out production? And Grady Saxman, which he's a session player in Nashville, is where I he's played on everything I put ever put out since 2013. He sends me a text and he says dick down in dallas and i was like well i guess we're going to grady's and we <laughs> went over there we went over there the next day and um we recorded uh it was uh saul he's a session player up there too but he played bass electric acoustics um and then grady played drums and then my producer alex maxwell did all the post-production stuff like the piano and the background and all that stuff and we because it sounds like i mean it is a legitimate song yeah. it sounds mm-hmm. stupid oh, to say yeah. it's not it's yeah. a parody song but it's still yeah like and, great uh, production. i mean i don't even it's, think it's a parody i think it's no. a, it's it's a, it's, a, it's a love story you know <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, a, it's a truth i'm gonna teach it to my 11 year old i'm gonna be like you need yeah. to get this song down so I, <laughs> that's a, a drumming video <laughs> um, i mean it's pretty serious as a heart yeah. attack you know i mean i get all kinds of messages all the time you know like military guys like i got a john deere letter this song is like save my life yeah get me from killing myself you know that's just but great. anyway so um we get the song recorded it's done in two weeks which that never happens in nashville you mm-hmm. know like it's mixed mastered whatever we get it uploaded um we have content of us in the studio like recording the song and I was driving down to Huntsville to play at Jefferson Street Pub. I don't know where this that is. was like I think John Dodd got me that gig. Yeah, it's outdoors, yeah. yeah. Patio Uh yeah. 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 And I and it's like three hundred bucks, whatever. I post this video of us in the studio before the gig. I get done, it has three million views. That's f- crazy, yeah. dude. The song's uploaded for pre order or pre save or whatever. I got like eight thousand people actually bought the song. Wow, it and it's all been DIY at this point, right? Yeah. You've done it all yourself. Yeah, yeah. I haven't. I've spent zero dollars on marketing or anything. It was just a viral moment. It was a uh, Billboard number one. Um, I beat out BT, uh, BTS, which is that yeah. big pop group. They were like trolling me on Twitter that week. <laughs> oh, I've <bet>. never <laughs> um, I feel it. All that hate. You're like, man, life feels good when I get all yeah. this hate, dude. Um, yeah, it's Billboard number one, man. It's crazy. Uh, it stayed at number one on like the iTunes charts for like two weeks above all the you know major people. I had record labels offering me record deals. I had one label offer me two million dollars. I turned it down. And so, uh, I so just, you turned it down, but why? Because you don't think you need it. Oh uh, well, now? the song, like you said, the song was never going to go to radio. That's so true. yeah, so their radio campaign would be pointless. And it's you know, I I'm, I'm I just signed at River House in nashville now is that a and publishing company no it's a it's a record label so it's, it's it's uh luke holmes is with them and, oh, okay uh, and, I, uh, I think i've heard of him yeah <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, drew parker and a couple other names but i i just did that like last month so i mean i think i think a lot of it is it's not about like signing the first record deal that comes along it's about signing the right, yeah. right record deal mm-hmm. and i mean i think that if this shit would happen when i was 20 years old it would have been bad news you know? oh you'd have been we were talking yeah, about how yeah. would you even be friends with yourself at twenty? Like no. this person be no. friends with your twenty? Not I would all. like I wouldn't no. hang out with that douchebag. Well, I didn't be friends with myself a month ago. Yeah, so. yeah, I know. <laughs> dude. So many people do that though. They they'll sign the first deal it comes across because you know um, they think that's it. They're like, okay, here we go. Fuck it, you know, sign your life. Especially two million dollars. There's not very many people that turn that mm-hmm. down. Yeah, I you mean, know. you know, I mean, I mean, we made really good money, you yeah. know, like in the first year and and last year we made really good money too. So right. I mean, I, I don't regret anything about that, you know. And I got to do things my own way, and 
and and you know in this new deal i have a lot of creative control and you know stake in what we're doing so and our other songs like, getting traction now oh yeah yeah I've ha- i had another song go number one uh last year in january called a uh, single again it's like single like a middle finger you might y'all might have seen it on uh yeah i saw that on tiktok yeah it's got like over like two hundred thousand uses on the sound that's cool that's crazy that's you can cool. do that yeah. i mean like wheeler walker can't get on radio either mm-hmm. and he's yeah killing it you know yeah yeah and that's kind of what i'm shooting for now though is to go to radio that's that's why i signed a record deal i just want to do it because my think i can't oh, absolutely. i just want to prove people wrong oh, yeah. Yeah. absolutely and that's um, where the cheese is at too but then again spending money to get on radio that's yeah, uh, yeah. You get ready for that because yeah. when they hand you uh you know you got to buy 50 ipads for this station and you gotta <laughs> like all the kind of stuff <laughs> yeah. behind you know the payola that goes on oh, yeah. yeah it's a lot of politics you know oh it's tons um, i mean it is in rock radio i'm sure it is in country yeah. too but a lot of it too was like not signing the first deal that came along it's like man i wanted to take care of my guys you know like terry's been with me for 10 years dude yeah. when i asked him to be in my band i met him at rick carter's uh songwriter night at bar, bar 31 oh, wait, oh okay yeah at bar yeah. 31 and uh you know and he played in my band when it wasn't cool like we were playing at mo's barbecue for a hundred dollars split you know and like, yeah and and free food so and uh i feel like you know those these guys have always had my back so i just wanted to make sure that we were getting in a good situation i feel like bands one. that don't go through that shit, i have no respect for if, no. They, if they just get it right out of the gate i'm like something bad's gonna happen to you you might have a stroke of good luck man but no. i can tell you you don't have what it takes to carry you through the slow times um, yeah i mean me and terry have only almost killed each other like twice oh i trust good. me being in a band's like a marriage dude i've got a marriage too i got a oh. marriage at home and a marriage with my band your band I, w- I would hit somebody with a damn guitar all that y'all slapping drinks out of each other's dude, hands every 10 I'm seconds you, oh it'd be no way the way no, somebody no. holds a glass of water makes you want to strangle the piss out of them when you've been in a band with them for 10 years dude remember everything play, they do remember we used to play dick slap yeah like, slapping each other's dicks well we're gonna need you to explain the Dick slap purpose of that game. Yeah. Yeah. What? It's like we'd be on stage playing, we just walk up and it's slap. Like, slap. Oh man, I, no, you can't play that, that game around me. Yeah. Trey would anytime it it would get to a solo, and it would be some song that had like an extended solo. Trey would come over there and just click all my pedals on or hit the tuner. <laughs> oh yeah, Trey would be like ripping into Freebird or something. I would just go like you know, you just pedal. That we hear the same thing of everybody says, oh, we can't play that drink slapping game, man. We'll f- beat each I other. I think it's up. funny until I would be like super drunk and then I'd yeah. <laughs> lose <laughs> your shit. Sh- yes, it's a, th- it's, a, it's, a, it's a sign of affection. Yeah. But it does not feel that way when it's no. a pff- yeah. in your head and you're like, oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. Somebody's getting their ass beat. But, uh, have you guys, have you guys, uh, experienced any of those deals you were offered? Um, w- was it, was it there any of the drama just the bull like people trying to like well we don't want you to use your guys you play with use these guys we're gonna put you together this shit. no but i'm sure that was probably coming right no i mean i didn't really experience any of that i think the the, yeah. the thing about it was is like you know that song was just such a huge song and like there was no yeah. money behind it to promote it you know right. i mean hell i've put out 14 songs since then so like, yeah i know what you know all, you, you guys know what you know putting a song out what all goes into it if it's not like a viral thing you yeah know? right um like you know my second song that kind of you know that went viral i mean it went viral but it ain't no dick down in dallas viral i mean that right. was a yeah. grand slam you know <laughs> he's, um, he's working on dick down in denver everybody yeah. just so <laughs> yeah. you know. but um i don't know i think people knew that like you know yeah i would you know that i wasn't gonna do that but i have seen that where it's yeah. like you gotta fire these people. yeah that shit man. And i think y'all y'all are probably kind of worried about that oh shit i i already started you, looking at going, yeah, yeah. i was calling lawn rangers going can i cut grass i'll come <laughs> but Dude, that shit goes on all i was the like time. shit I, I know half the people he's hired i know i can work harder yeah, than them. for <laughs> sure and let me tell you what my motto is no f- musicians so you're already scratched <laughs> there's a stereotype that follows musicians around in them that's sorry to say it's not a good one and it's no, a little it, bit closer to home than you're probably uh, more comfortable i with. tell everybody they're like i will we'll meet people in nashville now and they'll be 19 or 20 and they're like if i hadn't made it by the time i'm 23 i'm going home like, you might as well go home you now well yeah. Yeah. No yeah. Shit. if you outwork you'll beat most of the people that are ungodly musicians because they don't want to work i'd never turn down not only that but if one. you're a good hang 
Yeah. If you're not a weirdo, dude. Yeah. There's so yeah. many people are. There's a lot of them. It's, it's hard okay to. okay re- to be weird because we are definitely weird, but like, yeah. you know, not like. But a, just to paddle the boat in the same direction with well, everybody yeah. else. Like, egos, mm-hmm. egos too, man. You got so many people in Nashville or LA or, you know, any, any, any big city where there's, everybody's trying to fucking make it. Yeah. And their mommy told them they're fucking special. Or their, you know, their aunt says they're amazing, and they move to Nashville with these hopes and dreams, and you know, not enough talent to back it up most of the time. But it's just, it's so crazy to watch that happen, and and they really come in there, and they are their weirdos, or they're, you know, have such a shitty attitude, like their shit don't stink. I, I've, I've been around people like that there. oh charlie's cutting a country album right now yeah he you told, that, he told me you hear that <laughs> voice he's me as elaborate car <laughs> he's got a fucking great country voice oh, don't, I'm let, not don't let him lie to you no, i'm telling I'm you he really does that. i'm telling you he does man but That's... i'm working on one um right now it's dick down in denmark oh, is no. when, I was over, <laughs> <laughs> when i was over in europe <laughs> so, i'm here to play with you not Trey had down. 30 girls send him remixes when he lo- came out with the song yeah, like I, you should cut yeah. this let me tell you all this so I'm, I'm seeing this girl right now i might ask her to be my girlfriend tomorrow but you know yeah. we'll probably be broke up by the time this podcast comes out <laughs> you know, like, how my life goes you know my yeah. life's a joke but uh anyways <laughs> um so i mean I have people come up to me there all, all the time. They're like, let me tell you this story about Dick Down in Dallas. Oh, and I'm, it's the same story at this point. You know, right. I worked at Bradford and Warrior forever. <laughs> Did you? I was going to ask, what's your biggest job you yeah, ever worked? I worked there for seven years. And, uh, you know, like once you work there for so like so long, like everybody's problem, like the, the shit you have to deal with on a day to day basis is like the same shit over and over. It's just a different person. Right. So like every time I would get, I get people to come up to me and tell me these stories about Dick Down Dallas, it's the same story. It's like, oh, we went on our bachelor chip trip. We went into every bar. Your song was a hundred dollars you know per request and and that was just our song and we just loved it and it was just you know just like uh, it's, it's just we like, played it a couple of times i thought it'd be I, I said i should record this he'd appreciate it if we ever uh, snapchat and just godly. texted it to me yeah, <laughs> yeah people facetime that. them during their shows wanting them to answer really yeah. snapchats I'll every day it. like if if you if you hit me up and it's like hey man i got this girl here well you're married but you know yeah but if if you know if it's like close friend like hit me up it's like hey man I'm trying to like get laid will you mind FaceTime me so I can like show this girl that we're friends I'm like cool let's do it yeah. but if, like, put me down for an assist yeah. I'll do it yeah. but David's like I don't, like, I don't have to wash dishes you, tonight you know if you send this to Lauren like if we're not friends like f- off but uh anyways uh where was I going about that oh this girl walks up to me and she goes I gotta tell you this story about your song and I'm like oh. F- Look, here we go. She said, I was singing at Tin Roof in Delray, Florida, and I was singing your song, and I fell yeah. off stage and broke my foot. And that's <laughs> why I have this boot on. <laughs> and she's like wearing a boot. I was like, now there's a story I've never heard before. Let me get your number. <laughs> you, should say, you should say, hey, do you have time to tell that story one more time? <laughs> <laughs> Naked. Yeah. Old Bert's been in the, the cover band business for years, too. He used to play in a band called Downstroke back in the mm-hmm. day. Oh, yeah. With, um, nice. And we've... uh. Uh, he got out of the business, but somehow I'm like the mafia. I'm still in it. <laughs> but I'm trying to do stand up now, which is, I'm eating all the dicks. Terry, on you did some stand up. I tried. I never, all my shit's offensive. You've heard some of it. So, yeah. Know. Well, that's the best kind. Now. That's the best kind. What was the joke you told? I mean, we're on a podcast. They can edit Dude, it. I, it wasn't even a joke. I just walked up on the, sta- on the stage. The first thing, it wasn't any of my material. And it was, the air was out. It was burning up. And I was like, damn, it's hot. I haven't seen a Jew yet. Go ahead and lose the room. Yeah, right there. Right there. <laughs> They're well, like, uh, right you've got to get out. And I was like, I, I didn't mean it. Yeah, you're already <laughs> giving me the light. Yeah, I'm so. sorry. I thought it was a f-ing comedy show. Yeah. Okay. I, did I see you got Tracy Lawrence on your podcast? I was. He was on my podcast, and then I did his. Oh, he has one. I yeah, he's got, a, yeah. he's got a. He's got a podcast. He does so, it on yeah. his bus. It's really cool. Yeah, Teal's um, Roadhouse or whatever. Yeah, it was really cool. Yeah. And then. um I got to do this uh, Christmas special thing with Theo Vaughn, like right when. Uh, Dude, we when... try to get Theo in here. Dude, he's great. He's hilarious. He's yeah. a funny guy. Man, so <clears throat> we didn't have a direct connect, so we're going through like the whole manager deal. Yeah. So I, I just think it was lost with that, you know, yeah. whatever. Yeah, he's, like... a, he's a busy guy. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I, I, last time I saw him as a. Kid Rock does this comedy show thing. Oh, where... yeah. He's about to do another one, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. He does it every year. Really? And uh, when we first, you know, got the tour, or whatever we, 
flew with him on his private jet to uh, like. You've been on a private jet. Yeah. Are you are you wanting to get asked to leave, dude? What is the fuck? <laughs> no, dude? Dude. Every five minutes he comes up with something else for me to hate him for. Yeah. I'm just saying it's pretty cool, you know. Like I don't know, it's weird, but um, to think. But we get to fly with him t- to rehearsals. We go to rehearsals. Yeah. And then we're leaving rehearsals and we're flying back and. He's like, yeah, I'm doing this comedy show. If you want to like come or whatever, and it's at the Ryman. I was like, man, I was just like, man, one of these days I'm gonna play the Ryman. Like, I know it won't be for Dick Down in Dallas, but like, that's <laughs> it might be. it's you gonna know. happen, you know? Because like one day I am gonna play the Grand Ole Opry. It's gonna happen, you right? Know? I, I think that, but um, I know it's not gonna be for Dick Down in Dallas. But he goes, <laughs> he goes. Yeah that i have a comp why don't you just come to the comedy show and open the comedy show so it was like theo vaughn and all these people and yeah. like all these comedians and i got to kick it off by singing dick down <laughs> really it's awesome. yeah, cool nice. it's great yeah. but theo vaughn like God. i figured after i went to like did his like christmas special or whatever it was like with uh redneck tammy and uh oh, try the Ch- trash Ch- tammy yeah, yeah, uh, yeah chelsea lynn and uh well she's hilarious too yeah um but uh i just I don't know. I just figured that after I did that, like he might see me and never, you know how people are, you know, yeah. Yeah. never talk to him. But like he came up to me at that rhyming thing. He was like, what's up, dude? Good to see you. You know, I was like, Fuck yeah. what did you That's got left of- on your bucket list? Like, is there anything that you have left that you're like, oh, I may want to do that? Yeah, I've done some cool stuff. I don't ever really think about it until I talk about it. I'm right. Like, Shit, yeah. You know? yeah, I feel like I'm flexing. <laughs> Y'all try not to step on my dick. It's down here on the floor. I'm sorry, guys. It's, it's really in my stomach. Yeah. Not everybody's blessed like Terry. <laughs> oh, mule cock Adams. That's yeah, it. Yeah. Mule cock Adams. I had, Good this, guy. I had this thing that I go into every night where, well, me and Terry wrote the song together like, uh march of like or we put it out in march of 2020 before any of this stuff happened and it's you know basically a disc to a lot of shit that goes on in birmingham you know oh yeah and uh how long is the song 85 minutes <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a you gotta cut it down but uh um i go into the spill of just get basically let terry have a moment on stage and get people to chant his name and yeah. you know and i and i i keep it funny too because i talk about how big of a cock he's got you know i mean you're going you're doing everything you can to get him laid dude. Yeah, yeah yeah exactly exactly he has a he does a good job of that himself but, uh, yeah. that's because i'm married yeah there whatever you go. <laughs> like that matters <laughs> well you know <laughs> i'm just kidding i didn't do this job for the money right but uh anyways one one time I was like, I don't know, I think we were playing in front of kids or something. Oh, yeah, it was in North I, Carolina. I, I, oh, no. I have this thing that we, we pray every <laughs> night before we go on stage, and like I always say I have a brain tumor because sometimes I get like tripped up on my words, you know? Right. And this night I don't think I prayed for my brain tumor. And I go, I go, I go. Yeah, Terry loves kids. He's got a huge cock. Oh, my God. Yeah, I just walked Jesus. back behind my amp and stood there. I was like, nah, I'm not coming out. I don't even know this guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's bad. It already looked like someone the police are looking for anyway. One so. of the first like, shows no, we did after it. Dick Down in Dallas, I was like getting the crowd pumped up. Like, let me get a hell yeah. Hell yeah. Let me get a fuck yeah. I was like, let's get so fucked up in here tonight. Let's just get well, that probably wasn't a good choice of words. <laughs> <laughs> Bass player's like, well, it was fun while it lasted. Yeah. That would have that lit the room on fire in 85, though. Yeah. Oh, Nobody yeah. gave a shit. That's so funny how things have changed now. You yeah, the R word. You well, the, can't say yeah, it. Yeah, it's like, you it's can like, say whatever um, you want as long as you're not worried about that's it. That's right. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. As um, long as they've already paid their cover to get yeah. him. Did you say that on the mic? Well, wait a minute. That was probably yeah, a bit. He did. He did. He did. <laughs> Dead in the middle of the song. <laughs> of the intro. Here. I'm sorry. I, mean, I love you walking it back. <laughs> what, 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 is the, the yeah. what is the uh, Black Eyed Peas song? Uh, let's, let's get let's, it. Yeah, yeah. 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 And it, the the radio version was Let's Get It Started. Well, yeah. they made him go back and like change, change the master. It. Yeah, they did. So they sure did. I like the first version. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can't believe you wrote a song like that and didn't get caught up in the cancel culture one bit. That's yeah. crazy. What's going on over here with this right here? This guy. Oh, yeah. he's oh, being watched Cobra me? Kai. Yeah. You're talking about fucking head of I'm, security over I'm, here? I've been, trying, <laughs> I've been trying to figure it out the whole time. Is that is that your real hair? Is that like Joe Dirt? Like your parents oh, put this, a wig on you when you were a kid and it just grew into your scalp? Oh, this all this real son hell yeah son. <laughs> i'm trying to figure it out if it was a disguise or you really dress like that every day because i mean if you really dress like that every day we gotta hang out yeah. well, this is this is actually what i wear every day i got 
Hey, why don't you stand up? These damn shirts. <laughs> stand up, show them the Crystal Gale oh, well, shirt you got on. That. Remember this from uh, yeah. Talladega Nights? Ruin my perfectly. Make them spin. What is, like, is he saying? Ruin my Crystal Gale t-shirt. Yeah. Look at that. Look at oh, that. Uh, look at that fanny Dude, pack. Where did you get that Crystal Gale t-shirt? Yes. Oh, no man. kidding. I don't want one. Crystal Gale gave it to me. <laughs> 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 he used to. Yeah, he she, used to. Her back in the day, yeah, he was, she gave me that shit, man. He, he used to blow dry her hair. He used to blow dry her hair right before the show. It took four <laughs> and a half hours. We have a term in Nashville for hair. for guys like him. What? Purebred house cat. <laughs> that's, purebred that's, house cat. There you go, bread. son. Man, that's what you need to get put on the back of that jean jacket you're wearing right now. Oh, man. Purebred boss cat. Yeah, a tattoo says that. Co- Co- See, Co- I'm not trying to be flashy, man. What a bunch of. <laughs> My stuff, man. With them British knights you got on your feet. <laughs> you got, got them BKs. Badass, dude. So uh, I got oh, a topic are. that I've been wanting to talk about since I, since you asked me to do this. All right. right. So I heard y'all, y'all had Jess Muse on here? Yeah, last we did. week. Did she talk last shit about me? She did. She said, yeah. don't believe a word he says. He's got the <laughs> tiniest cock that I've ever seen in my, in my life. Well, you know, so we met... <laughs> <laughs> no, we're kidding. She didn't. Before you, like, hey, before you dig a hole, you yeah. can't get out of. I don't think she, she didn't really say said. anything about. We ain't got to talk about it if y'all don't want to. No, go ahead. No, go ahead. So, go ahead. So we met. Um, um, I guess when she was on Idol. Yeah. Uh, oh, she was ten years ago. Well, yeah. she was. She. We met her at that singer songwriter mm-hmm. night, and uh, yep. and then I think we played a show in Texas like last yeah, year, last and she year. opened the show. And uh, I didn't, I didn't get a chance to talk to her, you know, before mm-hmm. we went on. And then while I was playing, she was out in the crowd, like with like a mug on her face, like talking shit to, like you, you know, you can tell when somebody's talking. Uh, well, that's really? just the way musicians look in bars over there yeah. with their arms crossed. Like, yeah. oh, I suck. mean, she was like, yeah, yeah. basically, really? you know, yeah. And I, I mean, I just was like, fucking, I ain't gonna say shit to her then. No, we, <laughs> but we, she, she went on this rant on like TikTok about my, me and my roommate and like all this crazy. And I'm How does like, she know whatever. you? Huh? She doesn't know. You? Does she know you? We we, we, we met knew, her. We knew each other, but like I just like after that I was just like fuck it, I ain't gonna say shit to her, you know? Like it ain't, yeah, ain't she no did say, and I don't I don't know. Uh, she didn't go into it, but she goes, we told her you were going to be on you yeah. know, this week, and yeah, and she did roll her eyes and say, yeah. good luck, that guy, that guy's a piece of. Shit. I'm really I'm just not. joking. Yeah. She didn't say, she didn't say that. Well, I, mean, I, I was like, man, let's get some shit let's get some, hey, Stirring the oh, yeah. pot. These back. numbers cooking, man. I'm cool with it, man. I, everybody needs a little bit of drama I, in their I, life. Honestly, but. honestly, I, and I'm going to be really, she had nothing but great things to say about cool. you. Cool. Cool. Well, I mean, hey, Jess, I'm just if kidding. you. I'm if you <laughs> <laughs> she didn't say anything. If, well, Jess, if you see this, like, I ain't got no, no, no bad blood about you. I just was kind of rubbed the wrong way. So Look, he's just got a resting face man yeah. he can't well, do anything about well, look, it. <laughs> it's, it's it's setting in with him so it's obviously bothering him a little bit so we need to we probably need to get uh, she's playing tonight i bet isn't she yeah probably i was gonna say we could we could get her on where she get her on facetime let's show up her a gig let's just go uh I'm they're probably do she's doing the she's probably is she far a, away she's got a hell of a voice I, man she really does yeah she yeah <laughs> she just gave me her number like a few days ago to text her about that song yeah and um Dude, if, if I pretty- violated her that way by going, hey, man, got somebody who wants to say something to you. We're, we're filming right now. We're putting you on the spot. Trey Lewis says, fuck you. Yes, no, you no, 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 no. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, I mean, I hope. I mean, I think she's, she can was, sing. And, and doesn't she write all her songs by herself? I don't okay. know. Yeah. I think so. She's I don't really know. good. Um, now she was cool in the podcast. Um, who knows? Maybe it was something else going on. I'm just kind of like a passive person, you know. Yeah. If I think somebody doesn't like me, then I'm not going to talk. Well, to yeah, you. no. You know if, I mean? if, yeah. Some, if you think somebody's shitting on you, obviously, you know, I'd be like, hey, well, you know, why were you, why were you mean mugging me during the show? Yeah. But like fuck? you said, doesn't every musician look like that at your show? Yeah. You always think they're I sure judging should you. Do. If you look at me at your show, you'd like, be like, line them, cut it out. You're judging. <laughs> I can see what you're doing, dude. <laughs> Cut it out. Oh, man. I don't play for musicians at all. Anyway, yeah. I, I ignore it. I wouldn't yeah, even be looking at her. drumsticks in your yeah. noses. Yeah, I'm too busy <laughs> worried about old number one over here. Yeah. So He's so a lead what? singer now, too. Yeah, right. The drums so, are too oh, far yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Look, I, awesome. I post one picture of me up front, and now everybody's like, hey, man, why don't you back off a little bit? You're just God a drum. Down. Yeah, don't even yeah. post a picture of you up front. <laughs> I was up there for two songs. I can't get one picture of me. So tell, I, tell these guys what the f*** you did today. Oh, dude, the, I sent them video of it. They saw oh, it. The, okay, the so, polar plunge. Yeah. <sighs> Fellas, it's maybe one of the coldest days in January, and I jumped in the pool. I'm sure we probably already ran it on this episode, but yeah. I'm telling you, 
Don't ever do that. Joe Rogan makes it look like it's very easy to just jump in a freezing ass uh, swimming pool. <laughs> Joe Rogan's an animal. Though. Yeah, he is, but I am not an animal. I think it helped you have one less sling and two less ankle <laughs> yeah, bracelets yeah. on. Yeah. Dude, I, just, yeah. I almost was like Jesus walking across water when I touched it. I was like, God. <laughs> <laughs> well, you you christened the pool. You're the first person in it, though. Well, that's why I did it. I don't want. I mean, Charlie paid God knows how much for that pool, and I just wanted to be able to say, Hey, enjoy it all you want, but you weren't the first one in it. That's you know? right. But but the question is, everything was three thousand dollars. Charlie, did yeah. you pee yeah. in the pool? You no, better, I, you better not. I, dude, pee in the I, I, I'm not kidding you. Listen to me. Listen to me. I had full intentions on pissing in the pool, <laughs> but, but when you enter a pool the, at that temperature, <laughs> your it is fight or right. flight, dude. You're oh, like, yeah. I gotta get out. I gotta get out. I don't have time to pool. I, I gotta get out before I in this pool. Like I've got to get out as quick as possible. Oh my god. He jumped in when he came up. I seen it. He was trying to play it off. Goes, hey, hey, what do we say about I seen? It's What's I that? saw. This, listen to listen to this. This fucking, inbred son of a bitch <laughs> says I seen about fucking everything. Listen, go ahead. You saw. Listen, <laughs> listen. Comment the fuck down. I be, I be seeing. I be so, seeing. Damn, David's about to get fired. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, right now. So, so he jumped in this motherfucker and didn't do the water temperature. I think was uh, it had dropped. I think it was like forty eight when when you jumped in, oh. and so. When he come up, I seen it on his face. Like everybody's, you know, standing there and he's trying to be cool guy, you know. When he came up, his eyeballs were that fing big around. <laughs> How long I was mean, you in it? I mean, he, maybe four seconds. Yeah, he, dude, jumped, he, yeah. Yeah, he jumped in the I mean, deep end. Like no, right it it the felt like I sat in it and watched Titanic. That's yeah. what it felt like. It felt like I was in there forever. You were Jack. <laughs> Weren't you the one yeah. trying to talk us into doing some, some shit like that? Some kind of, I don't know. Cold, oh, a cold yeah, plunge, yeah, yeah. Yeah. therapy. Or he whatever. says he feels amazing after that. I today. do feel great. So, feel like so great. he got in the in my sauna blanket. I got it for Christmas. I ain't used it yet, but it's you know thoughtful <laughs> gift. So use your pool. I think I think it's my blanket. wife's way of saying, "Hey, get in this blanket and sweat off some of that fucking fat." That you got. <laughs> <laughs> so, pretty sure that's what's going on. So it's an infrared sauna blanket. So he got in there. So I was like, "Man, hop in this first. Get your core body temperature up." And he goes, "Well, wait, that might." Uh, that might make it worse. It's like, exactly. That's why yeah, I thought they were head. helping me. I was like, hey, man, I think getting my yeah. core temperature up is just going to make that even worse. And he uh. goes, of course it is. That's why I want you to get in that <laughs> thing. I don't want it to be great. And you did it? Yeah, you did yeah. it. He calls me on my way over and says, hey, man, just to let you know, it's only 51 degrees. We're kind of upset. We we were hoping it would be colder. I go, <laughs> the my water. body temperature is yeah. 98.6. <laughs> that's like jumping in. A freezer, yeah. man. Dude, that, that's, that's, a, that's a lot colder than it sounds. Yeah. 51 oh, yeah. degrees is you a lot colder than it sounds. running across yeah. the yard there. Dude, you look good. You see My tits yeah, were see. shaking out of <laughs> control. What was, what was actually colder, the water or getting out oh, of Oh, getting out of Well, no, yeah, no, yeah. no. It was the water. Yeah. I, I'm telling you, I had a lot of plans. I had plans to, like, show off and, like, <laughs> kind of do the backstroke for a little bit and uh, sit in there for maybe 30 seconds or 40 seconds. Man. The shock when you hit the water like that. I would have been better off just walking down into it, but man, the shock of jumping into it. <sighs> Our man. other guitar player, he takes cold showers every morning. Yeah. Y'all do that? I no, do after a no. sauna, but not just in I the did. morning, like yeah, right out of bed. No. Yeah. How miserable is that? Hell. No. It's like that's, going to McDonald's and getting two fish sandwiches. That's that whole. To drink. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to do that? That's that whole Wim Hof stuff, yeah. man. Like, that's such a popular thing. And, and there's good science behind it i know a lot of people that do it um like get your uh, i just couldn't have the balls to f try it i don't think metabolism going yeah well shit. yeah and it, it keeps helps you with from getting sick all keeps that. you from getting erections too that's funny when you were, <laughs> yeah. when we were kids. Yeah. come before the shower yeah they say take a cold oh, shower a for erections. Erections. A red when we were kids with normal shower. size dick. oh yeah mm. Our parents would say when we were younger, when we were kids, don't get in the pool like that. It'd make you sick. But that's just yeah. an old wives' tale. Uh, yeah. yeah. They also did they that also said, 30 minutes after you Yeah, wait. eat a lot of bread. And that, the food pyramid, remember that? <laughs> yeah. food pyramid they used to have? What was that? You remember that fucking weird? We're all 80s kids. You remember that weirdo that used to do? They showed these videos in school, and he was talking about the food pyramid, and he had a fucking suit on. It was like a skin suit. Mr. Body. Mr. Body uh -huh. showed all his organs and he had an afro. <laughs> I don't remember that. Jesus shit. Christ. Yeah, Dustin, pull that up. Pull up Mr. Body. You guys will remember this moment. <laughs> Mr. Body, it yeah, creepy. That that, that suit, like what, the color of it, was a skin. Yes, color? and but it showed his organs, so it looked like he just I didn't have any skin. Oh, I've seen that walking mm. around. 
But uh, I remember that. That was the fucking weirdest shit ever. It just scared the hell out of me when I was in elementary school. See, I remember right there. The second picture, Dustin, uh, from the left. Yeah, this this slim good body. Yeah, that that good body. Slim good body. That's his name. (laughs) That's his legal. No, I don't know if it's his legal name. (laughs) You don't you God. don't remember that guy right no, there that suit? I'm, I don't remember oh, that. At all. He looks like Richard Simmons' brother. <laughs> <laughs> that's so that's so Jeremy Simmons right there. <laughs> Is Richard Simmons still alive? He actually just died. No, I, I have no idea. Wow. Have y'all seen that? that there's a viral video going on now of kids going. They read fake deaths. They act like they're reading a fake death. They'll be like, oh, See, my God. Hey, look. Scroll up. The Rock, the- dead at 42. They're like, what? Their parents like start crying and stuff. It's <laughs> scroll up to the third one from the left. What, what, did they have a penis on this thing, I wonder? That was weird because it <laughs> – nope. And he looks like he's not packing much in the thing. <laughs> <laughs> look at that. <laughs> so, y'all don't remember that shit in school? Nope. No. Jeez, no. Are you over here trying that. to look at his organ? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, let's see if he's carrying a piece. It doesn't so, look like it. So look, Lisa Marie Presley died. Yeah. Um, who else died? Country Boy Eddie just yeah, died. Yeah, he died. Oh wow. Did you when hear about that today? I, didn't yeah, hear. today? I saw it. Josh Butler. You remember Country Boy though. Eddie? Uh, I don't remember him, but I know that Christmas he, show. That, I know. I mean, I know who he is yeah. just by people telling me. But my my old boss at Bradford, her, she like lived next to him or something. Yeah, he's right here. He, he, he lived he lived close to here. Yeah. Yeah. And then who else died today? Uh, hey, whatever happened wow. with that NFL football player that dropped? He's fine. Yeah, he's fine, yeah. <laughs> they get him back. <laughs> no, <laughs> for real. Is that the Big report head. you gave? He, no, man, they put some rubber no, on no, it. He's no, good. No, seriously. He, he was dirt in it. He, he's, he's home. Yeah, like he's at least. home. Yeah, and yeah. awake and everything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 So he, he gave a suffer, statement, I think. He'll be back off the IR in no time. Uh, yeah. Is he going back to play football or is he done with it? I think he's obviously not. Worried about that right now. He'll, ha- I'm sure, have to go through freaking months. He's going to be playing months. Madden football. For yeah, him. that's right. <laughs> uh, he'll get a bunch of damn. So with that happening, he'll he'll get so many endorsement deals and this I and mean, that. What a he won't freak have to play. A bear. Just, yeah. Was so, it just the hit that did it? Yeah, no, yeah. It, it was. Yeah, I'm sure it had something to do with it's it. It's like but. your heart beats at like. Yeah. And, and like it just was like a freak accident. Like Disturbed the, the electrical electrical. You know, like if it, you go online, they're like, it's the goddamn vaccination that did it. <laughs> hey, hey, like, it can knows? happen to anybody, yeah. but it yeah. has to be like right time, like yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. yeah. That's crazy as hell, though. He was like, what, 24 years old, or something uh-huh. like that? Peak condition. I mean, fuck, he's playing in the NFL. You well, know? What's, the, what's the like long term effects of that? Is that making he, it- he, he should be fine because, mm-hmm. um, so, you know, he died on the field. And they, luckily, they revived him, and so he he didn't have any oxygen loss, maybe for not very long, because they immediately started doing CPR, and then they said he died again in the ambulance on the way to the hospital. Yeah, because once you like yeah. that happens, it's hard to get your heartbeat like back That's to normal. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I just wonder, like, if he's twenty four years old, is he going to be because it was some freak accident? Is he going to be able to? recover completely or is he always gonna have to worry about that no i'm sure oh, i'm so. sure he'll be able to recover completely he's oh, young well, strong again. yeah he, he he'll he probably never i'm sure he'll want to but he'll probably he'll they'll never clear him let me say that yeah to play in the nfl again i'm sure i don't think That's any team would then. want the liability no yeah no. i saw something yeah. on the internet like uh rookies only you know like they only get like a certain amount of money if they're like put on injured reserve in their first three years but now like the bills oh are if roger could oh, try that shit they the would bills are light his ass up. the bills are gonna pay him out but they're like oh, i dig tucson what are we watching Can you turn that are we watching two girls sound one cup news thing hey man you're fired <laughs> <laughs> hey man we we turned our ringers off for this shit. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah yeah no he's he's uh he's home and uh, doing well, so he's they they saying he's going to recover fully. Damn, you just talked to him or what? Yeah, yeah. Sounds like <laughs> I, actually, I actually was Facetiming with him <laughs> right before the show, but uh, but yeah, no, it's um, I keep up with that shit a little bit, but and then uh, Robbie Knievel, Evil Knievel's <laughs> son died today too. It's like shit, man. The fact he lived this long yeah. surprised me. Yeah. yeah, this podcast is taking a bad. Turn. Hey, I mean, hey serious that. business. Have you ever had somebody die at your show? God, I've been under. Oh, a- no. 
Good Dude, run. but we got a story, though. <laughs> Somebody owed us. I've died. got one, too. Go ahead and tell you. So me and Terry wrote this terrible song called Summertime. Awful. I mean, it has the word free bird in it. So, you know, it's <laughs> some bad Killing it. He's like, it's oh. bad. But Rednecks loved it. It was there four chords, go. and uh, we were playing it, and we had a guy. What was that guy that was playing drums with us at the time? Tyler Tyler Murphy, Murphy was yeah. his name. He moved to Canada with his wife. Um, but anyway, so I was like, we're going to play this song. It's four chords. For, you know, just play something. And uh, <laughs> we play it. And this girl is on the, you know, T.P. Miller's, the checkered dance floor. And she just, like, falls on the floor. And it's like having a full-blown seizure. Like, wow. Right then and and y'all don't know whether oh, she's like, is she getting into this I song? I mean, it's or? T.P. It's just T.P. You don't know what's happening. Did it move her that much up. or what? That's <laughs> I'm not the weird dance she's doing. <laughs> <laughs> and Patty's like, seizure. Patty's doing this, so I figure she's like, keep playing. Yeah. So we, is she? She's yeah. like, fucking, you thought she was fist pumping. She's like, keep fucking Don't going. Stop. They're yeah. loving it. They're loving it. <laughs> they take, they card her out and get her out of the thing. And uh, and uh, Tyler looks at us and goes, that, font, that song sucks we're never playing that again it almost killed somebody yeah. it was so bad. <laughs> uh, we had some good times at tp miller's one night this girl got so drunk oh, was like was... sleeping on the uh she had never drank before and it was her bachelorette party she was like blackout passed out like right there on the entry where you walk in and terry got down there and got a picture with her <laughs> Dude, we, we, we i remember cafe forenza too mm-hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. You um, good? Where yeah. was that? Was that's that just, the one downstairs? It's just COVID. No, it's it's the one in Clanton. <laughs> Clanton. Okay. Yeah. So uh, we, I mean, we did this numerous times, but I remember one time we found some a girl's cell phone that was laying in the corner of the bar. Obviously, she had lost it, and we went through it and found like, of course, you don't have to dig that far. And sluts in Clanton. There was like, <laughs> there was a uh, nude pictures in there, and so we <laughs> we got all the nude pictures and checked the boxes and, and looked for mom or dad, and we found mom and dad. <laughs> Her phone, and oh. send them to her. Damn. Oh, yeah. and, wow. then we, and then, then we do when then we just turn it into the bar. We're like, somebody lost their phone, and we're like, they're like, y'all are such good people. We're like, we are. Thank you. So Wait till tomorrow. <laughs> we really appreciate it. But I got another story about um, we we had somebody die in our bar one night. It was uh, I'm afraid to even say where it was because I don't want to. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, the 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 my drum tech was like what running city. God, that's going to get me in trouble. No, no. <laughs> Arab, Alabama. But anyway. <laughs> oh, I know where that. So we're, um, my, my drum tech. wire place? Anyway. My drum tech is running our merch table while we're playing. And um, a lady that works in the kitchen comes out to watch the show for a few minutes. And she has a heart attack. And it starts falling on the table and, like, collapses through the table. And my... Bless his heart. My drum tech was like, get that drunk bitch off my <laughs> table. And as she's like falling, having an episode, people are like, what? He's oh like, God. I get that drunk bitch off my merch table. He called everything my, like he was one of those yeah. guys. Yeah. And, um, and they rush her out and she dies five minutes after they leave. But <laughs> oh, so, God, so, so the rest That's of awful. there's a manager there that heard him say that. And he comes up to us and he's like, um, you know, it's kind of weird when that happens. They wheel her out. We don't know that she's going to die, yeah. but it, it it shook everybody. And we we're like, let's just call it. You know, um, they were like, no, nah, keep playing. And we're like, we don't. Uh, you get up on the mic after something like that, and you're like, uh, all right, guys, uh, <laughs> we're going to keep it going. No, uh, and uh, I and, uh, played along with the charade. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like 15 minutes later, somebody comes up and tells us she's passed away. Uh. We're like, oh my god! So the manager comes up and goes, "Where's the cocksucker that works for y'all that said get that drunk bitch off the table?" And we're like. That dude don't work with us. That's man. probably the last thing she Not heard. Anymore. <laughs> we had a curtain Jesus behind the Christ, stage. Man. I swear to God, we had a curtain behind the stage that had that much space between it and the wall. And we told him, we said, you are going to get killed if you don't go hide behind that curtain. <laughs> and I'm telling you, for two and a half hours the rest of the night, he just stood behind that curtain because that guy <laughs> wanted to dismantle that motherfucker. He was going to kill him. He was like, you said that about a girl that just died that worked here. Like, it was not a good look for him. And we were like, listen, man, that guy, he shows up at some of our shows. <laughs> we don't we, even know. We let him run merch. I'm sorry he said my table. He has no affiliation. But he's a hell of a salesman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Y'all had somebody die at one of y'all shows. Uh, yeah. Yeah. A and Splendid that was... Chaos. He used to run sound for Splendid Chaos. Yeah. Remember Splendid yeah, Chaos. Yeah, tell us about that. Um, it was the last song of the night, and it was uh, Rage Against the Machine. 
and he goes to do his friend like holds his hand up and he goes to do a backflip. Oh no! Oh no! They don't you don't have to finish this story. We know how this <laughs> well. Happens. Well, he he they thought he was fine. You know he he hit pretty hard. Uh, you know on his head, his neck broke his fall, and um, so basically <laughs> they just took him out, put him in his car. Thinking, okay, he's good. We had a <laughs> massive concussion. Oh, so you had a doctor on site. Yeah, that sounds but, like something a doctor would do. You know what? Let's just throw him in his tercel and he'll be fine. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he and he went he fell asleep and never never woke up. Mm. That's mm. fucked up, man. Oh, yeah, man. that's terrible. Had we a, almost had that meth head girl die at that mud bug we played. Oh my god. Oh, and Gulf Shores, was, y'all played mud no, bugs? Dude, we played when Dick Down Dallas first came out, we played a ton of mud bugs. Because Oh, nobody, it's a chain? Mud oh, No, just a how mud four wheeler riding bog. festival. Oh, 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 not oh, bugs. Okay, never mind. I'm sorry. <laughs> not the one in the floor. I thought that shit hole in Jesus <laughs> Christ. I thought that shit on Gulf Shores <laughs> was a chain. How the f are you that deaf? They want a lawsuit, David. <laughs> we rode a mud bug circuit. I was like, I never heard of that shit. You motherfuckers. <laughs> really on a made different it. level. Yeah. Yeah. You've been playing music uh, too long. Everything's yeah. a bar. Well, the mud bogs were crushed. Bogs. bogs. Oh, okay. The mud bogs. <laughs> Jay, oh, we just. Okay. I'm still just getting it. <laughs> yeah. okay. The mud bogs were like crushing it when when uh, Dick Down and came out because we toured and. Uh, you know, it came out December 1st of 2020. So 2021, we were just kind of barely coming. We probably shouldn't have been playing shows, but we were. Yeah. Like one of our first, <laughs> one of the first shows we ever played was in, uh, where was that? Martin, Tennessee? Oh, uh, yeah, like 20. I know where Yeah, there was is. like 2,000 people there. UT Martin is there, yeah. And uh, there was like 2,000 people packed. there in February. Like, <laughs> it was insane. Yeah. Uh, but uh, a lot of the mud bogs were you know, booking shows because it was outside and like all this stuff. But we got to this one and um, we actually got pulled over that night and got stuck. Funny, another funny story. But um, this girl was like passing out drunk as hell and her boyfriend picked her up and like put her, you know, on on a shoulder and was like walking and he like tripped and dropped her. And when she came down, dude, her head hit the front bumper of our van so hard. Oh, oh my God. But, man. and before that, during the show, she stood up like on the railing and fell head first and knocked herself out. And then they got her back. Oh, see, I didn't know all that. Yeah, that yeah. happened during the show. And I was like, fuck. And then he did that. <laughs> then they got her back <laughs> and he puts her over his shoulder and take to take her out. And he trips in her head. Holy shit. Head first and <laughs> knocked her, knocked her teeth out if she had any. You know? <laughs> <God>. <laughs> so, yeah. she, she was trash. That would look like a goddamn jack o' lantern. <laughs> I'm, guessing that, I'm guessing that was their last date. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. This place is just like, there's mud everywhere. And like, we're, tr we're trying to like pull out of there. And, and then our trailer stuck in the mud. They had to get a tractor puller. Mm -hmm. and we're driving through like a Mississippi and like this for national forest. We get pulled over and uh, we pull over. It's raining. The cop comes up to the window. He was like, Reason I pulled you over, blah, 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 whatever. You had a you head know, on your bumper. Like, <laughs> no, no, like, yeah. there's, a, there's a tooth pull sticking pull on your bumper. Pull us over for a tail light, you know, or oh, something, yeah, or like they, a tag light. They're looking know. for band guys. Yeah, yeah. Band guys. <laughs> yeah. And then he was like, where y'all headed? I was like, we're driving back to Nashville. We had a gig, and he's like, uh, what are y'all in a band or something? I was like, yeah, actually, never that's... answer yes. Always say stripper. Always say <laughs> yeah. male dance review. I was like, I was like, yeah, actually, uh, we got the song called Dick Down in Dallas, kind of popping off for us right now. He's like, no way, <laughs> no <laughs> shit. <laughs> Married my wife to that song. <laughs> <laughs> she like, walked down the aisle. Like, that song. Get a picture, and he like he like calls in on the radio. He's going. He's like, so and so, you won't believe who I got down here, and he's like. Trey Lewis and the guy's like, "Who the fuck's Trey Lewis?" <laughs> he's like, "Dick down in Dallas." And then he's like, "Man, I'm sorry. Y'all have a good night. Write him a there's fucking a, ticket." A, he's like, "There's a guy. That, <laughs> he's like, there's a guy that like runs drugs or and then drives a white van. I thought it might be them. Yeah, we go to <laughs> we, we go to pull out and the tires are spinning and like we're stuck. So they had to get like a tow strap." Pull us out of the mud. So the cop did it for you. Oh, yeah. Damn. yeah, I hope so. Yeah. I, we got in line and we used to get pulled over every now and then. And they go, You know why I pulled you over? Mm -hmm. We're like, We have no idea. We were doing the speed limit. And he's like, Because I wanted to see who was in this bus. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I can't believe you're so honest to say that. <laughs> like, that's such a terrible thing to say. So you just pull over toward buses. He goes, Yeah, man, let me tell you who I'll have met. And he starts name dropping and name dropping. And you're like, Man, we got. 
a place to go. That's great that you pull over buses just to see who's in them. <laughs> Pretty and sure that's illegal. He's like, look at this picture of me and so and so, me and so and so. Here's Toby Keith and me. And we're like, God, am I, what a loser. <laughs> <We don't care. laughs> this everybody's like back to blue. This is some of the blue right here that yeah. you're back. In. That's the whole reason he became a cop. Mm-hmm. Hey, I remember you got pulled over in that big ass truck of yours, and the cop remember yeah. that. Yeah. He pulled you over just to see who was driving a big ass truck like that. That's what he said. He's like, let me see your dick size, son. <laughs> <laughs> so y'all got a new album? You you fixed the track, or you are currently yeah, are one? So uh, I've went in studio, cut three songs, and then I'm going back uh, the 25th, 26th, and I'm cutting 15 more. Nice. And then uh, I got a song coming out the 14th with uh, two guy these two guys on TikTok, uh, Thomas Mack and Cooper Allen. Okay. Uh, or no, coming out not this Friday, but next. I guess the what is that? The nineteenth? Hell, I can't. Yeah, some it. something like that. Yeah, but it's yeah. T- that's just going to be a single. That's just a little thing. They hit me up, and I, you know, I like those guys, so we just collaborated on it. It's called. You do. Me- a- it's called Mexican Jail. Mexican Jail. Yeah. You do a bunch of co-writing now that you're up there. Is it uh, like yeah, an eight so, to five thing you do now? Yeah, I signed with Sony Music uh, Publishing like two years ago, so I'm writing. You so know. when that happens, do you like write eight to five and just crank out songs and everything you crank out, they, they, they own or what? Um, so they own half of my publishing, uh, um, on, and then, you know, I have the writer share and all that crap, all that works, but so what's your net income for the, no, it's it's pretty cool. Like I'll never forget. Like as soon as that was the cool thing about Dick down in Dallas is like a lot of my friends, you know that live up there and stuff yeah um that have been working at this stuff for a long time didn't have publishing deals didn't have but as soon as that song blew up all of not only did i get a bunch of record deal offers all my friends got publishing deals and like isn't it funny how those things come around when you don't need them like once you don't need them they're like hey hey can we give you money and own everything and like get a percentage of your shirts and Mm -hmm. get a percentage of everything you touch but I was excited to sign the pub deal because, you know, I, didn't, I don't own any of the publishing on Dick Down Dallas. I just own the master. So, oh, really? You know, um, and that's different, you know, uh, from, you know, the publishing side because I wasn't a writer on it. So I'm, you know. I thought you contributed some to the writing on no, it. No, I didn't. Oh, wow. I didn't. I just, I was just the one that had enough balls, balls to, put to it record out. it. Right? <laughs> uh, that, now, video, that video is awesome, by the way. Oh, thanks. <laughs> have you seen the remix video? That, I have. We did a remix with this guy named Rashad. He like laid a verse down on it on yeah. on, uh, on TikTok, and we did. I feel like the remix video should should have been what the you know the yeah. first video. It's hilarious. Um, I'm sure I'll you Monday morning out. quarterback a lot of shit. Yeah, after it's, it's, it's like out. the the second verse. I mean, the new verse that says like she's popping that cooter like a cap gun. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> and, at the, and at the end of the video, like the girl's on top of me, r- like riding me, and I've got two cap guns and I've got a tire. <laughs> cool. um, I just kind of gave it away, but it, it's pretty funny. And like me and this this guy Rashad, we're uh, we're like investigators, like trying to figure out where this girl is. And uh, Matt Barrill, our tour manager, is the guy that's getting cheated on. It's pretty funny. Nice. Right. But uh, which is real life, also. Man, I enjoy, <laughs> I enjoy having the pub deal. It's really cool. Um, getting to write with some of the you know yeah. best songwriters that Nashville has to offer. You know, yeah, it's we, yeah. A really cool. But it can be stressful. You know, you write three days, four days a week, and then you're on the road, and then you got to come back and try to be like creative. That's just, yeah. Like, like, damn, I just need a day to like go fishing or something. Mm-hmm. You know? It since you you're in the country lane, is it? It's generally Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. That's the nice thing about country. Sometimes we'll mm-hmm. do like a two week where we do like Wednesdays, you know. Yeah. But, and maybe like a but never, yeah. The yeah. rock world, y'all just go, 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 right? I'm not even in your well, world. Well, David can't I'm even go a, back to half of the places. Yeah, like no, Oklahoma. No. He can't even <laughs> like, play those. Anymore. I look at the cover band industry is like it's the music business, but it's like attached to the real music business. Mm. There's so many things that are different. Yeah. And you've seen both sides of it now, but like I just think it it's I can't even there's so many things that were changing on a monthly basis when Lion was a band trying to get on radio and trying to get deals and getting passed down from label to label to label. And I couldn't keep up with it then, and I've been out of it for six years, so there's no telling what the industry's like now. It's it's I'm sure it's 180 degrees of what I was used to. And do, you, do y'all still do shows with Lion or no? No, we're doing one in June. Uh, you you, you, you can announce the date if you want to. 
No, we'll wait. We'll, uh, you sure? Yeah. It's locked. No, we're going to do an F with the guy, with okay. the band. Uh, and David's. But yeah, it'll it's be already June. locked. He's yeah. announcing yeah. tonight they're doing 30 shows. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all in North Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to yeah. all the dive bars we used to play. If you <laughs> requested it on that post, they're coming there. But we were laughing about how our schedule used to be like BJCC Concert Hall. <laughs> Big time wings, <laughs> uh, then it'd be an amphitheater, and then another f- pizza joint, wing joint, oh, wing God. joint. <laughs> like, yeah, it's like crazy how the schedule. One night we'd be in front of, I don't know how many thousands, and you're, then the next night two two hundred maybe. The uh, band you're playing with now is it's called what? Get, get sideways. sideways. Yeah, it's just, that's what I thought. I thought it was either sideways or get sideways. Are y'all playing like just private, like a ton of like a sorority? ton of privates? We probably have four clubs. That's it. That's awesome, dude. It's crazy. And those <laughs> and those clubs are like to get more privates, huh? Absolutely. Yeah, there, it's all college bars. We yeah. have a, we have like four or five college bars. We y'all play. played Blue Room not too long ago, didn't you? Sky Bar now. Sky Bar. That's what it's called. Yeah, we play. We're on a rotation there. That's one of our biggest money making. I thought y'all played Statesboro, in Statesboro, Georgia. Didn't oh no, no, we play the other place, Southern Social. Oh okay. no, yeah. But Statesboro is like a hidden gym, dude. That that yeah, sounds hear, great. Do you know the guy that uh, mm. that what's the guy that owns that place, Southern Social? The big tall guy. Do you know which one? You Will him? or John? John. Paul oh Bowen. yeah, we, we know got a John. Story. We Terry played... almost killed John. John's crazy. What did <laughs> he? He thought he was. That dude. <laughs> oh, I can't stand that guy. <laughs> no offense, David so, loves you. We're just gonna tell the story. His office. Yeah, fine. go ahead. I mean, yeah, I, I ain't telling the story. Hey, John, love you. Thanks for booking our band. <laughs> well, <laughs> If y'all, if y'all, yeah, a if lot. Y'all, if like, y'all want to cut it out, you can. But no, no, that's, that's um, so. Al is one of our good buddies. He owns um, part of the Blue Room in Statesboro. And I uh, thought Will, a guy named Will, books that. Um, uh, Will. Uh, yeah, he. Yeah, Will. Does. Uh, you know what we're doing right now? We're just, all the bands watching are like, oh, well, Al. Oh Will, yeah, I'm gonna yeah. pester the f- out of these guys. You know? <laughs> well, our call buddy, Mike at Courtyard. Our, yeah. He books everything. <laughs> 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 uh, Al. Uh, Al, we played in uh, at Ned Kelly's in where is that Milledgeville. Milledgeville, and Al was like, "Man, I got a lake place up there. Y'all are welcome to stay there." And I was like, "Cool, let's do it." Well, we get there, and I guess Al and guy from Southern Social are like, you know, old buddies yeah. or something. But you know, they're kind of rivals because, like, if you play at Southern Social, you can't play at Blue Room. Absolutely, you know, yeah. vice versa. Um, but uh, I don't know what happened, but the guy, the big tall guy from Southern Social, was like. It's like he's just picking on everybody. Picking on everybody. I mean, everybody. yeah, he, he picks on me. He but it's up like punch, he, he ends up punching Al in the face. Yeah, and like, he does. Terry, Terry like, picked no in the face, and Terry like, like picked up a rock and was about to knock this guy out. They're like, yeah, two yeah. grown man, grown men, yeah. like fighting. He, he outside. started shit with everybody that night. Then he hit Al, and I like got him off of him, and then he's like. Came back again, so I just picked up a brick, and I was like, "Well, f- this boy in the quick." I played, a, I played a win. I'm sorry. <laughs> so the moral of the story is that has nothing to do with them. Is that if you're playing in some some town and one of your acquaintances is like, "Man, I got a house. Y'all can stay here. Just get a fucking go hotel. to a hotel. Don't do it. Stay oh, yeah. in the van." <laughs> oh yeah, we've been offered to stay at his house before, and I just hate doing it because I feel like I'm imposing. Like yeah. you think you want a band to come stay at your house and then when seven guys are showering in a yeah. row and you're no cold i mean no hot water or well, i come in butt naked because that's usually what right. i do when i'm drunk and ready to party oh yeah our road crews like <laughs> yeah. trying to bring pussy back to your house you're like get these crazy whores out of the band <laughs> the guy that owns the club's house jesus yeah. how old's your son now 11 dang I good know, transition man. he's gonna be yeah yeah thanks that was real comfortable he's gonna be getting stinky fingers sure soon i'm sure yeah i remember you used to post videos of him all the time is he, is he playing music or anything but we tried to get him to play drums he could his new band's coming out tickle pie tickle yeah, tickle pie. yeah. <laughs> yeah. he's uh he's playing piano and he's really good at it but um i told him keep playing piano dude like yeah. when you get in high school if you're at a party and you just start playing a tickling piano, the ivories oh my god be the tickling whole room a lot of things. will surround you i was like you'll need a bat to beat it all off of you buddy because it'll be climbing well he's 11 he'll be beating things soon enough (laughs) (laughs) i don't even want to think about it dude. Uh, well there you go yeah so what's your so what's your guys's podcast man it's called dm monday okay so uh it's kind of all centered around you know dick down dallas going viral when the right when it went viral we got a bunch of crazy dms from girls just like crazy stuff (laughs) like roses are red violets are blue i want to you here's my oh, number you nice. know and like so we would i would do this little 
segment like with reels on Instagram where I would read the DMs and just like come up with like a crazy response. <laughs> That's you know? awesome. Yeah. So it's called DM Monday, and and sometimes we read DMs. We probably need to do that more, but um, what platforms is it on? It's on everything. Okay, it's cool. anywhere, and it's on YouTube. So it's like it's filmed, you know. And, yeah. And, and I I love doing the podcast because I feel like it diversifies the content sure. that we put out, and it gets a fa- you know gives the fans a feeling like they get to hang out with yeah. us. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, we don't have any fans, but uh, <laughs> it does make us feel like we get to hang out with each other. Yeah, yeah there you go. <laughs> but it's fun, man. I mean, you know, it's like sitting around like today, you know, just sitting around laughing, having a good time, shooting yeah. shit. No, that's you know? cool. That's a damn, that's a badass idea, too, the whole president of the podcast. That's cool yeah. as shit. That's good. It's a good time. <laughs> you ever, like, reach out to them or FaceTime them or some weird shit on the, on the podcast? Uh, we should. We've talked about that'd doing be that. badass. We're, you know, it's like we're twenty five episodes in. I feel like yeah. we're still we're still figuring it out. You yeah. know, for for some of it. But I, we've talked about doing that or have like you know how like Theo Vaughn has people like call in to his yeah. Yeah. yeah video you know? questions. You see that one where they're talking about like having to jack off a Bob raccoon cat. or whatever or the bobcat. <laughs> Bob <Yeah. laughs> He's, like, He's like, if you don't, that motherfucker gets angry. He's like, I'm not normally into like that kind of stuff with animals but i mean if you're servicing that damn bobcat <laughs> <laughs> yeah i saw that that's yeah, great that's funny. we wish we, we're, we're gonna try and get more comics uh comedian zone i think that's you can get bird on bert crasher just start tweeting them he shows up at people's well, his openers coming in in a couple oh, really? of weeks uh yeah. dave williams yeah. yeah awesome um but yeah and we got cassio coming on on the episode after mm-hmm. this so we're we're uh we're trying to get more more com- like a healthy blend of musicians and comics and then who knows what? I mean, we're still figuring it out too. We, you know, we don't yeah. have a lane. We, we would be shocked if a bunch of girls started writing in, going, "We love your podcast." We'd be yeah, like, yeah, "Whoa, yeah, didn't happen. see that coming." But <laughs> yeah, I mean, sometimes, like, dude, I had my mom on my podcast. That was that was a, that's one of our most viewed episodes. You know, like really? I had like my best friend from down here in Birmingham. You know, like on there. Like sometimes I'll have people that nobody knows on there. As long as like people are, can laugh and like have yeah. a good time, they seem to love it. You know, yeah, yep. that's cool. Oh, yeah, everybody's doing a podcast now. There's so much noise out there. I mean, it is. How in the hell do you get views? You know, it's crazy. Like we, we our numbers are going up. But we watched two girls, one cup the other day on our podcast. On the podcast, oh, wow. Oh, you really have to play been a that. long time. I forgot about that. Filmed uh, our reaction. That video changed the internet forever, dude. That was, oh, it did. That was the first viral. David's like, we should watch video. it right now. And I just Absolutely. can't wait. I was like, don't pull it not. up. I keep looking at the TV. <laughs> <laughs> don't pull it up. I'm gonna throw up. Dustin, go ahead and pull up yeah. two, two, two guys in one bucket. I'm just I'm joking. One bucket. <laughs> Cake farts, all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That shit you've already seen. As a nasty. Because I never could make it through the, that I, whole video. I, I, I never made it through it. Uh. I remember the first time I saw it, I just was like, man, I can't wait to show this to everybody. Uh, uh, watch yeah, it. you're not going to make him nervous or sick with stuff. Oh, no, really? No, he doesn't. Yeah, I mean, you can't wow him. You can't even get an eyebrow raise out of this cocksucker. <laughs> He'll say, what are you doing? I'm like, I mean, oh, I'm at my kid's uh, game or something. He just sends something. Like a poop gift. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. I've been looking up those Toe Jam videos on, uh, on Instagram. <laughs> toe Jam those? videos. Like, no. no. People with nasty feet, like cutting it open and cleaning it. Oh, yeah, oh wow! I, I follow Dr. Uh, Pimple Popper. Yeah, whatever yeah. her name like, is. I think it's gross, but I just like showing it to people <laughs> that can't handle it. <laughs> right? You know? mm. No, I'm. You got to be used to. I'm so used to him doing anything weird, whether yeah. it's walk in the bathroom while you're in there or send you something. <laughs> what are y'all traveling in now? That uh, sometimes we're in a bus. Sometimes we do the bandwagon. Sometimes I fly, you know. <laughs> sometimes in a sometimes private, private, private where it is. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes, sometimes the guys go in the van and then I just drive my truck. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. I see you got some like dates way out in like Denver and stuff. Yeah, we'll be in a bus for those runs. It's just like whatever makes sense financially. You know? Yeah. You got CAA booking you? Or? Uh, I'm with WME. Are you? At the moment. Well, that's great. Guess They'd... what my agent's last name is? What? Glasscock. Mm. Does, he yeah. hear, does he hear about that often? <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah, He's talk- probably tough as well, shit. Anybody the, with funny, that last the name. funny thing is, is my childhood best friend, his last name, they're they're like first cousins, and we didn't even know that until after like I'd met with them and like signed over there, and um, which is pretty crazy. But they've always called my friend uh, the Crystal Pistol, and well, which I found out that, <laughs> that <laughs> great. I found out the that Crystal. the nickname actually came from my agents. Uh, oh really? It's like yeah, they just adopted it or whatever. But yeah, it's pretty funny. That's great, man. Like when people hit me up, they're like, hey, what's your booking info? And I'll just be like, hey, this is my agent's number and name. And they're like, Glasscock, that's funny. Yeah, <laughs> that fits you. <laughs> or like they might think it's bullshit or something, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, let's. I want to advertise that right now. If you're watching this podcast, if you want to send in questions or anything, it's X Five Pod. I guess he's going to put it up, or he'll put a yeah. graphic up for it. But right, right there, yeah, right <laughs> yeah. here, there, wherever <laughs> he's going to put it. But definitely send us an email if you got any questions. We'd love to answer them on future episodes. And we're not going to throw two girls one cup on for you. We promise. We're Fuck. a lot classier than this guy. Right? <laughs> 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 Well, we appreciate y'all coming on today, man. We, I hope, Hell yeah. I, I yeah hope, uh, Del, thank, thanks for having me. I hope y'all have continued success. I mean, I don't even know why I need to wish that on you. You're just killing it so just bad. Crushing. Hey, maybe tap the brakes, guys, and quit, yeah. <laughs> quit killing it so hardly. Not that people already don't know, but but plug your socials, man. Where can people go check you guys out? Yeah, uh, just Trey Lewis Music is my handle for everything. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, yeah, man. Twitter, all that stuff. Um, I have a ton of music out everywhere. Sweet. And, uh, yeah, podcast is DM Monday, and I uh, appreciate y'all having me on. Hell man. yeah, dude. Nah, we're glad oh, you guys man. came through, man, for sure. So yeah. It's been fun, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> we're going we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna to come up and raid y'all's podcast. Hell, hell of a yeah. Go to linemsucks.com for Dave's stand-up yeah, don't, tour. Don't <laughs> yeah. start any shit here, man, because he'll fucking wrap it up. smoke that cigarette? He's about to go outside oh, and burn man, it. Man, I've been wanting to smoke this hoe for a while. <laughs> he pulled it out. <laughs> <laughs> he pulled it out two minutes in. Oh, yeah. We'll see y'all next week. Thanks for tuning in. See you in. guys. Girl, you get away with love.